Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know if you see that lion, but the thumbnail I put up for this video is actually just that part up here cropped and high resolution. So when you look at the thumbnail, when you click on this video, that's just that image right there, but cropped. So you don't have everything. You can see I did it on my iPhone because what I did is I played back the video on my iPhone. I hit pause and did, and did a screenshot. And then I cropped out the fan and myself and everything else and only left in this little corner right here from about, from about, I guess from about here to about there, over to there, up to the top. Anyway, praise God for that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> okay. Here's what the Lord's been telling me. It's the Christians that are going to bring judgment. The Bible says judgment starts with the house of God. So when Babylon the Great falls and the mark of the beast comes out, that's God's judgment on the disobedient, lukewarm, foolish virgin Christians. <clears throat> and so, I'm telling you, the Lord is showing me that, and when I think about it, I remember back so many times in the church, every time the Holy Spirit would use me, the leadership of the church, other members of the church would just hate on me. And I remember that from as far back as when I first became a Christian and was was telling some people about a dream I had. And they're like, God doesn't speak today. And I was like, no, it was a dream from God. It had to be. And God had already shown me dreams and visions and revelations. So I knew they were wrong. But they still rejected everything I had to say. And so when I get up here and preach and teach and say something like, you know, Babylon the Great falls, then the mark of the beast comes out, then the rapture, and all these people out there hating on me, you're wrong, you're wrong. And then I teach that that um, after the rapture, those who are left behind are the 144,000, and no one gets saved. It, it, the 144,000 are left behind, they're sealed with the seal of God, and nobody gets saved. They hate on me. And then I prove it. I prove it from God's word, and they still hate on me. And a guy like Perry Stone, even if you prove it to him from God's word, or a guy like Creflo Dollar, that he's in error in the love of money, or a guy like Joel Osteen, that he's just being lukewarm, they, they still won't listen or obey or repent. The Bible says they refuse to repent. Their, so I'm going to quote a verse regarding regarding. The 144,000, after the mark of the beast comes out, there's a certain number of people, Christians, who are to be put to death for their faith. Once that number is complete, then the rapture happens. That's Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. <clears throat> but I'm going to quote to you and prove to you that after the rapture, the only people left on the earth would be the 144,000 with the seal of God. Ready? Revelation 7, 3. The angels cried in a loud voice. Now, I'm going to read the King James because so many people are like, I disagree with the NIV. But basically, the NIV says, Do not harm the land or the sea until we sealed with the seal of our God, the servants of our God. The King James says, I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. He cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And then it goes on to say the number of them was 144,000, 12,000 from every tribe. So, so, after the rapture, God is going to pour out his wrath on the earth. And they still reject you when you quote this scripture. But, but I'm going to prove it even more. Are you ready for this? Here's the next verse. Revelation chapter... Whoa. 
Where is it? Chapter 9. Are you ready? Now you quote them this and they still won't repent. <coughs> Revelation chapter 9. The fifth angel. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto earth and was given him the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and, and, and there smoke... And there arose smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. As scorpions of the earth have power. And it was, see, the, the King James is harder to read for me because it's this weird, strange English. The NIV just flows. That's why I use the NIV. Okay. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And it was given them that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months and their torment was that torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it striketh a man in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them here we see god is pouring out a judgment a judgment on the earth and it says the locust with the sting of a scorpion attack every single person on the face of the earth except for those who have the seal of God. That proves what I just said. Now you can take that and you can shove it down Perry Stone's throat and he still won't repent and start teaching the truth. He'll still say, oh no, the rapture happens before any, you know, before any hardship or trial or before the mark of the beast comes out, the rapture happens. And after the rapture, a bunch of people get saved and there's a big revival and blah, blah, blah. Now, people are going to try to say that, well, those 144,000 and the two witnesses are in the earth because they're, they're, they're preaching the gospel and leading people to the Lord. Don't get me started. I can prove you wrong. They're only proclaiming the judgments of God in the same way that Moses and, he, and, and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, by this time tomorrow, all the, you know, the locusts are going to swarm. And then it happened exactly as they said. And then at the end of it, now here's where some people in the earth might benefit from the, from the two witnesses, is if they believe because the last final judgment... Uh, the Bible does make it clear that some Egyptians put blood on their doorpost to prevent the angel of death from taking the firstborn son in that household. So during this time, anyone who actually believes what the witnesses are saying, or the 144,000 are saying, or the two witnesses, if you believe them, then you'll know, okay, I'm going to show you special honor, maybe in the same way that the third troop of 40 went to um, Elijah, and the captain was on his knees crawling to Elijah saying, please don't burn us up. Showing some serious respect. In other words, y'all are going to have to show some respect to the two witnesses. And why? Because if you don't, they'll just say, close up the heavens, say it's not going to rain for three and a half years. Not only that, but I'm going to burn you with fire. <laughs> and, not, and, and I bet you during the time when the locusts with the string of a scorpion, when those are out attacking people. If if one of those hundred and forty four thousand goes into a town and says, "Listen, I want a I want a T bone steak with potatoes au gratin and green beans, and I want it now." If you don't give it to him, guess what? Here comes that swarm going to attack everybody in that town. And that one of those one of the one, a guy with the seal of God on his forehead is going to walk right through town. Nobody's going to harm him. Nobody's going to hurt him. And if they do, those locusts show up and start swarming. So they walk in supernatural protection from God. You can disagree all you want, but you're not going to change how things happen. Listen, you can stand there and teach that the rapture happens before the mark of the beast comes out and that all of uh, Matthew chapter 24 is for a different group of people. You can teach that all you want, but you're not going to change how it actually happens and how it actually goes down. 
And he, here's the thing. It's going to go down. And the very people who are teaching that are the very people that God has decided you will take the mark of the beast, you wicked, false teachers. And we'll see. Maybe somebody, I know, I know the Lord's shown me, Joyce Meyer is going to stand firm in her faith because he showed me that she was beheaded for her faith. A guy like Ken Peters, the, you know, he had a vision. He's been prepared since 1980 for his end. He knows in his heart when he sees all this stuff happening in the earth, he knows, okay, my day's coming. And I remember the vision. And at the end of it, I was put to death for my faith. So Ken Peters is ready. He's prayed up. I guarantee you that. If somebody knows Joyce Meyer, you need to tell her. You need to get ready to lay down your life for the Lord and be a martyr. And don't forget, that's the great one of the greatest honors you can have is a martyr's crown. And the Bible says that once the number is complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith, then the rapture happens. I disagree with you. You're an error. Well, guess what? Babylon the Great is about to fall, and you'll find out. Because after Babylon the Great falls, the next thing to happen, listen, everybody, listen, you get on the on the internet and you'll see Russia is preparing for World War III. China is preparing for World War III. Iran is preparing for World War III. They just set up their S-300 missile system, and I betcha, I'll betcha that Vladimir Putin took his S-300 missile system and, and sold it to Iran and updated his whole missile system to the S-400. So... Russia has the S-400 now, and Iran has the S-300. I'm just saying, how did it all happen? Edward Snowden leaked all the information they needed, not just NSA information, but DARPA information, designs for the F-35 uh, fighter or whatever it is, the Lightning or whatever that thing is, designs for other top-secret stuff that was in development by the CIA, and Department of Defense, and NORAD, all that stuff was leaked. And not only that, but ha uh, Edward Snowden, he put up a bunch of open doors in all those systems that he has a back way in. He probably still can access DARPA, the DARPA um, mainframes. We know he's he's still hacking. He's Listen, if you don't know that it was Edward Snowden who's, who was the technical individual responsible for hacking the Hil Hillary Clinton emails, I'm just saying, so he's still at work. Now, they're not going to tell you that. CIA's not going to tell you that. They know. But they're, that's one of those things that's too humiliating. They're keeping that away from the public. But basically, when you see Russia's system, they found a way to hack the Donald Cook. If you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> Google Donald Cook. The at USS Donald Cook. All that technology is recent stuff ever since Edward Snowden left the country with a briefcase full of hard drives. And the last thing he did, just be right, at, or the first thing he did after he left, is he smeared the NSA. How do you know that? You're not CIA. You're not top level, high level government. Yeah, well, I bet you somebody in the CIA, if they were to watch this, they'd be going, This dude, how does he know this stuff, man? Top generals be like, dang it. You know, they know. And if they didn't know, they're go they're connecting the dots right now. Oh, yeah, Edward Snowden probably helped him do that. Oh, that makes sense now. Wow. I'm just saying. We need, listen, I'm not, listen, here's what the Lord is, the, here's the point of this video. That judgment is coming to the Christians. First. Then God's going to rapture us all up and the inhabitants of the earth will have to, will be attacked by the scorpions with the sting of a locust or whatever it is. The locust with the sting of a scorpion. And then, ready? Here we go. Let's go for another proof. What happens after the rapture? Are you ready? Revelation chapter 16. Now keep in mind, Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 16, there are two sequence of events and the sequences line up like this. So the events line up like that. Okay? So whether this happens before the locust with the sting of a scorpion or after the locust with the sting of a scorpion, I don't know, but here's what happens. And it's talking about the angels. Seven angels 
pour out their vials of wrath, okay? Revelation 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth. The first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisy some and grievous sword upon men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And those, in other words, the king, the New International says, painful and ugly sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. So painful and ugly sores, and also they're smelly. There's something smelly about the sores, like they... They just smell. The second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of a dead man, and every living thing died in the sea. Now, anybody who tells you, shows you pictures of like a red tide and says, look, this is biblical fulfillment. It's not. It's only the fulfillment of the biblical, biblical fulfillment if every living thing in the sea dies. Okay? The third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. I heard an angel of the waters say, in other words, there's an angel in charge of the waters, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be. Thou hast, ju thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink as they are worthy. In other words, for they have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints, and they have, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. Now, if you compare this scripture with one of the judgments that Moses and Aaron proclaimed over Egypt, you will find out that when when the blood when the when the uh, when the waters of Egypt were turned to blood, I believe it's Exodus chapter eight or nine. The Bible says that. The Nile was turned to blood, but also water that was stored up in buckets and pails also turned to blood. And this says the same, basically it's the same judgment, but it's a worldwide judgment. So anybody who says the two witnesses are out there preaching the gospel and, you know, getting people saved, they're a liar. What the two witnesses are doing is exactly what Moses and Aaron did the day before this happens, the day before the waters are turned to blood. The two witnesses are going to proclaim, you wicked inhabitants of the earth, by this time tomorrow all the waters are going to be turned to blood and you will be forced to drink blood because you have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. This also tells you that every single person who's alive in the earth at that time has had some part in shedding the blood of God's prophets and saints. Now how come you don't ever hear Perry Stone teaching this? Because he's, because he's just teaching whatever he can teach and taking up offerings and living a... He has a career. He's a career preacher. He doesn't have to preach the truth. Even if he got up and taught a bunch of lies, he'd still be able to take up an offering and take in $10,000 a day if he wanted to. And he, he refuses to repent, I'm telling you. He probably doesn't like me for, for, for calling him out on this. But the day is coming when Babylon the Great will fall and the sky will be rolled up like a scroll and he'll be hiding in a den of a rock somewhere. He'll be hiding somewhere. If he can find a, if he can find a fallout shelter, a bomb shelter, he will. If not, he'll be in the basement of his house. Or somewhere. So, basically everything's going to go down exactly as is written in God's word and judgment starts with the house of God so before the rapture the mark of the beast is going to come out the Lord told me that the mark of the beast is God's judgment and the very thing that causes the patient endurance that you have to have patient this calls for patient and if you stand there and say oh that's not for us we're all going to be raptured up and that's just for a small group of people called the Jews better than you don't know what you're talking about because after the rapture, it's the 144,000 are sealed with the seal of God. And those are the only guys who are left behind. I just proved that. You can, re you can reject it all you want. But the reason God's judgment is coming to the Christians in North America is because of Christians like, like that who even after you prove it and read the scriptures and prove it from God's word, they're still going to say, I think the I think the twenty four elders represent the church, and then I can quote you a scripture where John is talking to one of the twenty four elders. So how are you going to tell me 
that one of the 24 elders is sitting there talking to John, and you're going to say that the 24 elders represent the church, you are whacked. I'm just saying. So you're going to receive the judgment of God for, for believing lies and teaching lies. And it's coming, and those who serve God, who love the Lord, and put God first, can't nothing harm you. And the Bible says that he will give you the power and the grace, and you will be not be tempted beyond that which you can bear. And on the day that it's time for you to lay down your life for the Lord, God's going to say, listen, at some point before the rapture, God's going to say, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And there's going to be a lot of people who just suddenly receive the power of God to lay down their life for the Lord. Then once that number is complete, boom, the rapture happens. The 144,000 are sealed with the seal of God. And anybody, the, the, the foolish virgins who are left behind, and miss the bridegroom, and the lukewarm who are vomited up, you know what I think? I think they're going to be taken up about maybe halfway up into the stratosphere, like they're being raptured. And, they're going to, and the minute they go, it's the rapture, they're going to suddenly be launched back down to the earth. I'm talking about the disobedient, lukewarm. I'm wrong. I could be wrong about that. But I'm not wrong about what the Bible says. So when the rapture does happen, the foolish virgins will already have fallen away and gone, went and done taken, taken the mark of the beast. And Jesus himself is going to wait. He's going to wait and wait and wait. And he's going to watch as their oil starts to run low. And for those who are obedient to God and have a history of serving God and putting God first and always obeying God, God's going to refill your vessel every time you need it. But for those who are disobedient, teach false teaching, and led many astray in their teaching, even though they might be teaching some of God's word, to stand there and change the book of Revelation. Do you know what happens to those who change the book of Revelation? Read Revelation chapter 19 and 20 and 21 to the very end. I can't remember where it says it, but I think it's like the very last thing John writes. Is where he says, anybody who changes these words or adds to them or subtracts from them, they're going to receive the wrath that's written in this book. So a guy like Perry Stone teaching that the 24 elders, that the rapture happens in Revelation chapter 4 or 5 somewhere, and the 24 elders represent the church, and, and that Matthew chapter, the whole chapter, Matthew chapter 24 is for a different group of people, not for us, that we're raptured out before all that and everything. They're teaching lies. They're manipulating God's word. And they will certainly pay the price, especially if they don't repent. And they're not going to repent because they, they're they haters. The day, the day that, that you can repent, time is running out on repentance. In other words, by the time you have to drink blood, it's too late to repent. By the time the locusts are flying around and attacking everyone who doesn't have the seal of God, it's too late to repent. Just saying. You already missed the rapture and you're not a, one of the 144,000. You're going to hell.